In the marathon, there's always that little leap of faith because you can't just go out and run, <laughs> you can't run 26 miles worth of work at marathon pace. That is a marathon. You know, you'll, you'll be too tired, it'll wipe you out. So you have to do all these sessions that are 12 miles in length, 10 miles in length, 9 miles in length, 16 miles in length. And you just on race day have to believe that the cumulative effect of all those workouts and the little bit of rest you have before the race will enable you to go the full 26 miles at pace. And so this workout becomes the closest thing we do to what the actual race day will feel like. The workout today was 16 miles at marathon pace. Scott ran 457 pace for 16 miles. Um, Matt ran 459 pace for 16 miles and Kellen averaged 535 pace for 16 miles and that was on a pretty difficult course with a lot of turns and some really tough hills and so I feel like you know they finished looking good and if they can do that today then they can do just about anything in LA. Ben Bruce wasn't here today because we flip-flopped his weeks. Um, he ran the Rock and Roll uh, Arizona Half Marathon last week. I just wanted to get in a good hard effort, um, and we were running 450s early, and it was just, I felt so strong. And then I got to the last four miles, and I just unleashed like a huge last four miles, and came away running a PR. I would have probably been happy with 103, 104, just to show I was in shape, but to run 102, it just leaves me extra excited because I didn't finish that race on my hands and knees, and all I can hope for is that I could feel even close to that in LA, and, and then hopefully a good result there. And it was a good indicator that he's very, very fit, and who knows, maybe a dark horse at the trials. Um, for our team, it was a huge uh, boost of confidence for everyone, Matt Scott and Kellen included, because they've been training with Ben, they know how fit Ben is, they know how fit they are, and if he can do that, um, then they have to feel good about themselves. We're heading to Lake Mead to do a 16 mile tempo at marathon pace tomorrow. Tomorrow, you guys have like one of the all the water bottles. And like, holy crap. Yeah. Should be fun. I'll be more excited when it's over. Definitely. So I'm gonna be ready to just like be in a lot of pain. Yeah, you kind of have to be. Yeah. Oh, Maybe like that area. That's a good one. Every time like, I start thinking like possibly of like making a team or something, I was like, well, don't think about that because it's kind of a shortcut because there's gonna be so much pain before it. But I envision that. Celebratory part. Yeah. This is a loop that goes for about 40 miles, I think, but this is the flattest part of the loop, and that's what we're gonna run on. So what are you doing? I'm measuring, so I like to be pretty exact with these things, so I'm gonna measure every quarter for them on this like four mile stretch, so that we can stay on pace. And uh, we're gonna try to mimic the LA course a little bit and do some turns. There's an old parking lot that we're gonna turn right into at one point off of the path, and I'm gonna make a bunch of turns so that we can kinda see how that affects our pace. Always everything's measured. That's kind of the nature of it when you're getting ready for a marathon. Gotta, gotta know the pace, gotta know your body. 
What we're standing over here is kind of part of the course that we're going to be running on. As you can see, there's a lot of downhill. Um, and we're going to be going out and then turning around and coming back up and then going back out and then back up. So um, there are definitely going to be some really challenging points in this workout. I think, uh, you know, it might be nice on the way out to get some downhill and get the legs turning over a little bit, but then turning around and coming back up is going to be uh, pretty taxing on our system. So it'll be interesting to see how we handle that and to, uh, you know, I guess maybe it'll be good to simulate how hard the marathon's gonna be, I guess. <laughs> I'm trying to find the positives here. Like, it's only two miles, so That's they're gonna what, be harder, yeah. but we can hit it. It's not yeah. like we're going to the well at our paces. That's marathon pace, I would so it's comfortable. I would rather go 455 go. on the down and go like 5 whatever on the way up. Yeah, he might tell that us to do that anyways. Do. Yeah, just to just for a yeah. couple seconds, which would maybe make sense. I think it does, it makes it more doable that it is only two miles. Yeah. That we're gonna be like. It's four miles total. Well, right, but I mean like at a two miles at a time. I really don't like not hitting my face though. <laughs> really bugs me. gonna hit those miles and everything else is gonna be much faster. I am gonna have That's why Kellen's gonna run way faster than that. She's gonna hit it. Why does it bug you? I just, I don't know. It's just <laughs> something I really dislike. I like being at the pace that I'm prescribed or faster. I hate being slow. If anything, I wanna be 10 seconds fast instead of one second slow. I don't know why, it's a bad quality, bad <laughs> habit, but it's just how I roll. Scott, yeah, what do you think about that? I, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's impressive watching her work out that way, but I'd rather be one second slow. I think they hated me when we first got here because it was a little hillier than we were maybe looking for, uh, the course that I kind of mapped out. And I sort of agreed, but, you know, I tried not to make a big deal out about it, and, and, you know, the optimistic spin was that you know, we can't always get ideal conditions, even at the trials, even though there's no hills, there will be pace change and there will be um, surges being made by, by competitors and this, and this and that. So I feel like in that sense, it was a good course. It is a chance to feel that rhythm that you're going to feel on race day. Um, finish 16 miles feeling like you could have done a little bit more. Doing it at the end of a 120 mile week where your legs are a little bit tired to begin with. And it gives you the confidence that you can do it on race day. Um, it's, it's equal parts physiological and mental. The workout was pretty good. I mean, it was pretty much exactly what we were hoping to do today. Uh, it's not necessarily imperative to, to crush it um, <clears throat> since we've already done a lot of really good work, but it's definitely good for the psyche to, to have the closest thing we do to a marathon um, go well. So it was uh, pretty exciting to get through it, and I think I said I'd be a lot more happy after, and I am. <laughs> Overall, it went pretty good. I mean, I hit my pace. I was probably closest to... I've ever been to actually hitting my pace. I think I was 535.2 average, um, usually a little bit fast, so I guess it was good to actually feel marathon pace. It's a big workout, so you're a little nervous heading into it, similar to the race, but um, got out there and started feeling pretty good throughout and got through it um, at the goal. Effort, pace, so success. I think it was a good confidence booster. Um, miles 13 and 14 today were 437 and 434. Uh, so to, to be able to run that fast when you're already that tired, when we ran 130 miles last week, uh, you know, obviously our legs are tired coming into this workout and that's kind of the whole point is to see how we can handle the overall mileage um, and just the, the workouts continuing to stack one on top of the other. So, um, you know, I think today was a good indicator that we're definitely going to be ready in LA. This workout is kind of one of those that, you know, if you hit it, you are confident going into the marathon. Um, 
and we all kind of hit it, so that's definitely good. If we can just do what we've been doing, we're gonna be fine. We don't need to push the envelope, we don't need to do anything crazy, we don't need to start a new diet, we don't need to try to hammer the last big workout. We just have to do what we've been doing, go to the line, and unleash all this work. Hit it.